Uh, it's 8 a.m. and things have already been a struggle because that tropical storm, tropical depression, I think it's just a storm at this point. Berries moving in. It's already starting to drizzle and it's going to rain for a couple of days. Not a big deal. It's not like anything dangerous, like a couple inches of rain. Everything's fine, but it's just like I want to get things done very quickly out here while I can because it's supposed to be like in the upper 90s in a couple days when the berries gone when he's not here anymore and i suppose the more i talk the harder it's going to be to actually get things done but i'll probably ramble anyways this thing this was such a piece of junk got it like a year ago maybe two it's outdoor outdoor furniture it, no it's just falling to pieces a little bit of moisture just pff, falling apart so i've been using this to film over here because it takes up a very big footprint i've been repotting lots of repotting going on got the foot planted up that video is already out this plumeria over here I did about two-thirds uh, perlite in that mix. I still don't think that's draining quite right. You can see here, I mean, it's pretty heavy in perlite, but I think it needs more. So I need to swap that out. And then, uh, But I really think I should focus on doing things right now at this moment that I don't want to do when it's in the upper 90s outside, which would be mulching that big bare spot in the front yard. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here. How's everybody doing? I've got ahead of myself. Didn't even think to introduce the video. Sorry about that. Yeah, I actually, I think that it's going to be raining here any minute now, so I probably won't be able to do this at this moment. But where that maple tree was, I need to get that mulched. I need to get that rhododendron out of there that died from getting all the sun since the maple's gone. I realized something here. Yeah, you know, I've been talking about what to plant here. It's been like an ongoing thing since, I don't know, May probably. If this tree died of verticillum rot, which the, an arborist came out and looked at it and said that that could be the cause. Why does my lawn look like that? What happened here? What's going on? Whatever. I don't really care. Uh, if it was verticillum rot that killed the maple, the arborist said that that is a possibility, then I should not replant here this year. Should wait a year. To do that so it's another dilemma I'm facing here as I got to figure out what to do here do I wait maybe I can just throw some annuals in here see what happens there and let them do their thing the main thing is that I don't want to put anything in there that's going to feed that bacteria if it's in there basically need to bake the area out but I'm gonna go ahead and mulch it and uh, that will at least look better and then uh, I'll go ahead and pull that rhododendron out that looks terrible this isn't it's not gonna be like a transformation you guys are it's just mulch it's not exciting sorry i just don't want to be out here mulching when it is hot it amazes me that there are still weeds coming up even with how thick this coverings coming in here with these impatience man this weed is like really really wrapped around down in there nice try i see you these are filling in very nicely though Aren't they? They're looking great. Okay, I'm gonna mulch. Yeah, and it looks like the sun took out this Akuba also. A little red bud coming up over here from the red bud. There's a big red bud tree over there. And that's kind of... It tends to spread around. There's a little bit of stuff left on this Akuba, so I should probably try and dig that up. I can make a cut here. Move that into more shade. Look, there's more impatience coming up. A whole lot more coming up. It's only right there. I don't think there's anything over there because this whole area has been shredded. But I was just surprised by that, that there's more. I didn't plant them. They're doing okay though. So that says something. I was worried I couldn't plant the impatience here because there wouldn't be enough shade because that maple's gone, but maybe I can go ahead and fill in with the impatience. I don't have that many left because it's mid-July and they don't look great because they've been in their six packs this whole time because I was waiting for this to get done and it just took forever to get the tree service out here. I don't know. I'm going to think about that. I'm putting the mulch down anyway, so I can pull it back if I want to throw the impatience in here. Oh yeah, that looks so much better. It started to like come down kind of hard, so I just sort of went inside, didn't have time to rake it out, but I'll do that in a bit when it's, you know, not raining. I also got an orchid repotted that I've been needing to repot for a very, very long time. One of my oncidiums. I mean, really, it's, it's a year overdue. But that's a long time for an orchid. 
Is focusing going to continue to be a problem because of the drops on the... I think it is. <laughs> that is very unique for July. Thanks, Barry. Nice and cool out. I actually have the heat on in the car. That's to dry my shoes out. They got kind of wet. So I am going to run a few errands. Need to go to... Where am I going? Sam's? I don't remember why, but I have it written down. Lowe's and... Um, well, I guess that's it. Probably nothing exciting. I'm going to Lowe's for a shower head, but we can look at the plants while we're there. I'll, I'll show you guys around. I don't know if there's going to be anything new or different there, but have a look. Maybe there'll be something fun at Sam's. I, I, I doubt it, though. Can't have any more of that. Nope. Not going to get hit by YouTube. I'm at Sam's, and I have been having a blast rocking out to my old CDs. I found them, and I was surprised they work. Okay, that's the end of that story. Just been having fun with my old tunes from, like, 2012. Yeah, houseplants. See some Majesty Palms, some Yucca. The Sansevieria's don't look too bad for a uh, $13.98. And... Sad aglonemia, some big spathophyllums. I see a little dracania back there. Ooh, I want that. You know, I wonder if they have shower heads here and where on earth that would be. Mm, hello. Does anybody know where the vibration I vibration. Okay, I can explain that. I just walked past this thing with Why? I don't understand. That's why I said five. It was stuck in my head. Shower heads. The shower head aisle. Where's that? Where's the shower head department? That's it? Hmm. So I don't... What's going on here? I would think the signs just up twice, but they're different prices. They look the same to me. Uh, I don't know. Okay, they are different skews, but neither skew matches that one. You know, I also really, I don't like these things. There's no water pressure out of them, so I would only be using that. And not, I don't, I don't, no. I need to go to Lowe's anyway. Rain is doing some fun things to my hair. I have to like constantly keep messing it, putting it back. It's not exciting stuff. I love how when it's raining, cars, like, still, we'll ignore the stop signs out here and be like, yeah, you're out in the rain, you can just stand there, I'll keep going. Just blown in tropicals, that's a cute name, cute way to talk about them. Some succulents, these, oh, okay, that's cute. Okay, how much are these? I think these are adorable, and I need them in my life. I don't, I'll completely redo them, that's kind of pricey. Ten dollars, I just, ugh. I just want the can. Everything in the top needs to be redone, but the cans are cute. It's like, look at, that's funny. It's like, what? Maybe I can get it marked. Ooh, look at all the Marantas. Lots of them. There's a whole bunch from over here. And beautiful little Dracania. This is a, a really, really nice little Warnicky Dracania. I love the variegation on that Dracania. So pretty. And some cute little things. Hey, and they got some nice stuff outside too. The ZZ plants are really big. Some false Aurelia over here and Dracanius. Lots and lots of ferns. Always so many ferns. Yeah, I guess that's it. It's raining so I can't really venture out into the other parts. Well, I guess I could. I just, I don't really want to. I'm wet enough. I don't need to get any more wet. Wetter? more of what, you know what I'm saying. I'm home. Changed out that shower head. I was thinking, hi baby girl, how you doing sweetie? You want treats? I don't, you don't, you can't eat treats. You can't eat treats, vet said no more treats. Wet food. She does not like wet food. It's not, she's not into it. What I was getting ready to say is that since it doesn't seem to want to stop raining, I thought, let's go to the botanicals. But the, like literally the sun came out right when I hit record. Pretty sure. Still want to go. I don't know why I said let's. Y'all know it's just me here. Oh yeah, that's not going to last very long. It's just, there's everything so 
wet. There's not much I can do out here. And um, I'm not thinking I'm going to want to after today because it's going to be like 98 to 100 degrees outside and it's been raining so the humidity is going to be crazy high. But anyways, at the botanicals here, the uh, Morphophallus titanum is blooming and that's a pretty rare thing. Well, it's budded. The bloom, they say they think it's dead. It bud blasted, but it's still a gigantic flower bud and I think it'd be pretty cool to go see it because it's a pretty rare thing to get to see that. Also, I think this pine tree's dying. We just, we've had so much rain and this one during the storms a couple months ago got blown like this way. And so I think maybe that messed with the roots on it. I don't know. I gave it some iron and a, a starter fertilizer. And then I waited a little bit, like uh, probably four to six weeks and I gave it a holly tone fertilizer to acidify the soil a little bit because soil here's a little bit on the alkaline side. And it's just, I don't know. Time will tell. Hasn't been a great year for trees. Last winter did a lot of them in. See all this black, the sooty mold, mold. It's fungus, it's a byproduct generally from white fly, aphids, scale. I'm not seeing any of those. I've been in here inspecting the plants. I can't find them. So uh, there's a major snail problem. Pardon the cicadas, by the way, it's that time of year and whenever I come out here and start talking, they feel they need to have their part in the vlog too. Like they don't get it, it's not about them. But it's just that I can't make them shut up. I'm not actually seeing those insects over here, but you can see the snail damage is just horrible. I've done the natural baits with the beers and stuff like that. I can't, it turns out my dogs like beer, so can't do that. Uh, alcohol is very bad for dogs, so can't do that one anymore and I've done a bunch of other ones. The snail bait though, the slugging bug killer from Bonide is supposed to show up today. Ordered it like a month ago. All the nurseries, I haven't been able to find it here locally. So I'll be spreading that around in here. I'm gonna cut this azalea back anyways and there's a silver lace vine in there that needs to come down that's just, this whole spot needs a revamp but I don't wanna move these plants until I've treated them. So I'm going to have to hold off on that, even if it's just for like a week, but it's the slugs and snails are really bad. When the sprinklers come on tonight, I'm going to see what, look at what these dogs do. When the sprinklers come up tonight, I'm going to, there's a sprinkler head that's right here. I'm going to twist the top on that one and shut that off, help dry the area out a little bit, but otherwise just kind of have to keep an eye on things and keep them sprayed sprayed at nighttime. The thing is, I'm not going to spray until I identify a bug. Like, that doesn't, that's irresponsible. I don't want to do that. So I'm just trying to spend a lot of time over here. I think it's got to be white fly. And I'm seeing, focus, yeah. So see, there is, there's some white fly stuff going on in here. Just not in the, ab okay, just not in the abundance to be causing a problem to this extent. Like, it's all the way, it's, a little bit up in the magnolia even. See that? And so it's a it's a fungus and it's not necessarily something that will kill the plant but it does block the plant from being able to photosynthesize properly because it's covering up the plant cells. But it grows on top of leaves that have been chewed on or that are excreting the sap, the honeydew, from the phloem feeding insects like aphid scale, mealybugs. So that's why you want to tackle the insect problem more so than the mold problem. It's a fungus. Uh, neem and whatnot. That, that's like black mycelium basically is what's going on there. Yeah, I guess um, when things dry out, I'm going to come in here and do a much more thorough investigation so I know that I'm using the right spray and treat for whitefly. Whitefly has been an issue before when things are really, really wet. This area doesn't have much airflow. It's like a dead space in that corner. But the whitefly is normally a much bigger problem on the mimosa, but I use a systemic on the mimosa, the bare like three season granule, and it has been working. I've been doing it for two years now and I haven't had a problem yet. So I guess I could try the same approach over here. That's enough of that. I mentioned that I repotted an orchid earlier and I thought it would make more sense to show that now than later. There it is, Oncidium sherry baby. Very, very large pot, big upgrade. I like to use a hanger on it. It's not in anything special. I did an orchid bark blend and then I top dressed it with a little bit of lava. It just help holding the moisture because these dry out very, very quickly. That's not typically a major problem for the sherry babies. Oh, 
Hey, what you doing? You got places to be? All right, bye, pumpkin. I am very conflicted as to whether or not to take my good camera. I would like to get good pictures and everything while I'm there, but man, it's misty outside. Even with the sun out, there's still, I just, just dropped my keys. With the mist outside, it's still like, uh, I don't know. The plant is inside of a building, but I still have to walk outside to get there. I'll take it, see what the weather's like when we get there. We, me. Oh, and before I go, an update to what I was saying about the wet food situation. And if you're like, oh my god, shut up, you want to go see the plant. I timestamp things at the beginning of the video. That one's on you. We don't, not taking things too seriously here. It's a weekend vlog. It's all just hanging out. But the vet, her pumpkin's liver enzymes were elevated. Her blood sugar was a smidge high. And there were some crystals in her urine from her urinalysis. Which isn't terribly uncommon at the crystals at all. That's not uncommon because cats tend to be dehydrated. They don't like to drink water, which is why it's good to be able to incorporate wet food into their diet. Pumpkin does not like wet food. And um, so I have an entire just array of wet food here that I'm going to be using. I'm trying things out, seeing if there's one that she will eat. At the very least, she drinks the juice out of it. And the dogs get the meat, so that's not going to wait. And then the idea is that when I find the food that she likes, or even, like, kind of likes, I can start blending that a little bit with her dry food and um, do things that way. I tried just moistening her food. She won't have it. No, her kibble has to be crunchy, or she does not want it. So uh, it's just a whole fun project of getting her hydrated. So it's a lot of food that has a lot of juicy stuff in it. One thing that really bugs me with animal food is that when it comes to the analysis parts, they're not really required to say very much. So uh, what I want to know is sodium content, but it's not really listed in a lot of these things. So I'm doing this and then I have a like unsalted um, chicken broth that I'm trying to put in her water bowl just a little bit to make her water more enticing. It's just, it's a whole big thing. You know, the things we do for our pets really is just over the top. I got this to try, but I think I might take it back because, pardon the parrots, because there's just a lot of stuff in here that doesn't need to be there. Like the cats, they're not gonna care about thyme and rosemary and parsley, you know? So I don't know, that's gonna be like a last resort, otherwise trying things out. So guys, let me know if there's like any magic wet food you've tried with your cats that they really like. Maybe your cats are picky also, and um, yeah, I'm doing the whole thing, you know, blending it in and mixing things and giving her lots of options, and I like a whole entire thing from the vet. I'm not going to go through it in this video. It'll be way too much, but it's been fun. You're worth it, pumpkin. Yes, you were. You were. Oh, is there a fly? You going to get it? Go get that fly. Get that fly. So yeah, so the goal is to get her hydrated, and then she goes in for more blood work in three weeks, and another urinalysis in six weeks. So I'm not terribly concerned, because if this was, like, an emergency, then I would assume they went back, well, I'll come back in a month and a half, right? Um, because part of the thing with those values and things being elevated and the crystals and whatnot can also be stress-related. And then, you know, she was at the emergency vet two weeks ago, and then she had to go back to get her stitches removed. Girl, where are you going? I know, Toby keeps taking the peanuts in there. So Toby goes over to the parrot cage, the parrots throw the peanuts on the ground, and then he brings them over in that room and destroys them on the carpet. He's always having a good time, that Toby. Time to go. Things are really blurry, and I'm sorry, I don't know what that's about. I'm going to mess with my settings a little bit. I'm here, and uh, it is extremely crowded, so uh, once we get over to the flower and whatnot, I may not be talking, maybe I'll do a voiceover, maybe it'll just be music, I don't know. 
Ooh, them big hibiscus. Oh, I really hope I remembered my membership card. <laughs> oh yeah, it is packed. I grabbed an umbrella bag, put the camera in, in case it starts to rain. That's nice, things are just beautiful here today. There it is, world's biggest flower. So big. Unfortunately, it's blood blasted, so it's dying. It's not going to bloom, but that is still amazing. I got to get kind of far away for you to see it. Oh, they did a cross section cut so you can see what's going on inside the flower. Or that may have been to diagnose why she hasn't bloomed. It's been over a month they were waiting for her to bloom, so I guess maybe that's why they cut her open. See what's going on in there. That's amazing. There are a lot of other really cool plants in here, but this is... A lot of people don't get to see these. That is insane how big this flower is. Would have been cool for it to open, but I mean, still, looks amazing as it is. <laughs> Should I get one? Should I plant one of these? No, they need very, very, very warm, humid conditions all year round. I mean, I do have a pretty warm grow space, but still, I don't, that's, no, no, don't. Oh. How cool. Okay, I can't really get too close. <laughs> Fun story, apparently my battery wasn't charged. Pulled it right out of the charger, but nope, dead battery. Hmm, almost dead battery. There's a little bit of juice left in there. Got a few pictures. Everything's so pretty. The kalakajas, cannas, gorgeous tropical water lilies. Here is the rose garden. Very pretty. Love those bell fountains. They have a really cool little sign here you guys can take a screenshot of that explains like how to read the, well it says right there, understanding rose labels. Nifty stuff to know if you're looking to start up a rose garden. There's the Climatron. Don't know if I'm gonna go in there. Uh, I've already done a video in there before. If this was charged, I would do something separate, but <laughs> nope. Oh. Oh, this is beautiful. Look at how gorgeous this is. Don't think you can go down there and stay on the path, but absolutely stunning. Oh. Wow, okay, I need to move my voodoo lily to more sun. <laughs> That's why mine hasn't grown very much. I remember when I got it several years ago, it said to keep it in the shade. These probably get a bunch of sun. Oh, good to know. I am very confused how they have their Akuba Japonicas over here in the full sun. I mean, it, it, clearly they're okay. Mine just turned black as soon as they get like more than a few hours of direct sun. So I don't, I'd like to know what the trick is there. I'd like to plant up gladiolas again. I used to have tons of them, and I had to clear them out, and I kind of miss them. They're just, they're so pretty. The blooms don't last terribly long, but there's something nice about them. Ooh, that one's pretty cool. It smells heavenly over here. Fantastic. Oh, I bet that would have been so cool to have been here when all these acanthus were in bloom. That would have been gorgeous. Looks like some of them still have some flowers on them. Yeah, pretty. 
I'm guessing these are the Spinosas, or um, some variation of Spinosa, Acantha Spinosa. Some really cool rhodias over here. Okay, and then there's all of this, which is really pretty, but I don't, there's no, so I'll just turn around, that's fine. Okay, I think I'm gonna cut to music. <laughs> hey bird, how you doing? Thing. Tropical water lily, the variety is called Charm. Beautiful. I can't get zoomed in close enough to get you a good angle, but just believe me, it looks like one of the fake flowers on eBay. It's like purple and white with a pink on the outside. It's stunning. I'm sorry. It's Southern Charm. It's a variety. So cool. Okay, now I'm leaving. 
Oh, quick look at the cactus garden, then I'm gonna go. Got the camera up over here in the umbrella bag. I do have a camera bag just for the people out there who like to be smart. Yes, but it's not waterproof. Got some agaves over here, the perii, the perii, perii. Lots of prickly pears, various varieties, yuccas. What agave is that? Oh, Neo Mexicana. That's a fairly hardy one. And these, for the most part, are out all year. This is 6A, 6B. Oh, this is a variety of Apuntia. I've had a lot of trouble finding. It has really pretty purpley outlining on it. In the winter time, the pads are actually purple. It's been uh, pretty wet though, and it was a bad winter. But you know, the apuntias, the pad will fall off and it'll it'll keep going, it's fine. Mm -hmm. Yucca Rostrata, Sapphire Skies. I've never seen them protect it, but I've never been here when it's also like 13 degrees below zero. And I'm referring to Fahrenheit. I think that's everything. Yeah, okay. I mean, this place is gigantic. There's a ton more to see, but time to go. And so kind of glimpse around at some stuff but I'm ready to get back in the car just cuz I'm wet this grove of magnolias they put in here in the springtime is absolutely stunning it's just an archway of pink flowers beautiful giant pink flowers and they are the saucer magnolias which is what I have in my backyard too and I would like for mine to get big like this maybe I should go in and do a heavy prune on the inside open it up. Okay, so I was feeling kind of inspired and decided I want to go by the water garden store just to sort of check out their water lily selection, see what they have in there, in their stores, and um, I need to get some water hyacinth and some mosquito fish minnows anyways, as it is, so that's what that's about, and the sky is stunning. I would be surprised if they had that southern charm one, but that would be pretty neat. If they did, there's also a police officer behind me, so I'm really paranoid even though I'm doing absolutely nothing wrong. But you guys, I'm sure everybody here who drives can relate to that. Like, I'm not speeding. I'm being well behaved. Okay, they're turning. That's nice. That's a relief. I'm taking some back roads to get there. It's kind of fun. You can sort of see what's going on in people's yards and this area there's sort of a diversity with the houses and whatnot this little mount thing that I have the camera in is kind of hard to adjust so like sometimes the hood of the car and the suction cup and stuff's in there but it's all right you get the picture I, I think I already drove past all the really pretty yards anyway so <laughs> whoops you see I realized that <laughs> look at that beautiful landscaping to the right I mean I don't hate it it's, native stuff and probably invasive stuff and lilies anyways what i was saying is that i realized i can have water lilies i couldn't have those before with the koi because they always ate them some koi eat them some koi don't they always say you know the experts like well you need to feed your koi more listen the reason my koi got so big and i had problems because they were eating that sturgeon food they were eating plenty and they still were like, oh, I'm going to eat every single living plant you put in here. They just, they had a taste for it. And that's okay. That was, that was their jam. <laughs> and it's also why my friends, the uh, two different places I have my koi at now, like they can't have water lilies. So and sorry to them. And also ducks. The ducks, they don't, they destroy the water lilies too. So it's not just the koi, but the koi certainly aren't helping. But yeah, so I'm going to go in there, 
This place is called Chalele. It's in St. Louis here, and they have a really great selection of water plants, aquatic plants, marginals, and uh, they generally usually have koi and goldfish and the mosquito fish and sometimes catfish and some other things. It's a small place, but they have neat stuff and I don't really, I guess I don't need to explain it. We're going there right now. Y'all are about to see it. But yeah. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm shutting up now. I'm here. Ooh. I need some lotus. I don't think I said that. I didn't like complete those words. I need some lotus. I want lotus in my life. Oh, those are cool. I could always get goldfish. Mm, I'm gonna be specific about getting goldfish. Like if I go that route, then I want to like get nice ones and plan out and pick them out. These golden orfs, they're really cool. These lizard's tails here, the saurus, saurus, really good bog plants. They're marginals. They can take shade or sun. They grow really, really well. Oh. Fairy moss, that's some cool stuff. Oh, tiny little lotus. The perennial water lilies are of course an option, but they do need a dormancy. And um, with the grow space inside, I might have to up the lighting because I like intense lighting, but that water stays warm. So I should be able to keep a tropical. And if not, those can go dormant too. There are things you can do to keep them at rest in the winter time. It works. Pickle roll rush, another awesome plant to throw into your ponds that grows very, very, very well and very cold hardy. Need to not look away from the things I'm talking about. That's the pickle roll rush right there. Oh, they have the rain lilies. These are so pretty. Isn't that a pretty plant? It's so dainty and cute. And they have tons of lotus here. But they're very pricey, which is not uncommon with lotus. So that's not going to happen today. That's not an impulse buy. I want to plan that one out. Ah, oh, the Brulias. These are neat. Pretty purple flowers. Very easy to grow. Also a tropical. All right, I'm going to pick out a lily and then catch up when I get back to the house. Maybe I will have gotten some. Maybe I won't. I don't know. I have to say this quick, so I don't have time to roll my window up. But you see all those trees? That used to be a field. The majority of those are Bradford pears, and it's a really good example of why there needs to be responsible, responsible, responsible planting. They're not a native here, not in St. Louis, not Missouri. I don't know where they're native to, but not here. And uh, they were planted very heavily in the early 90s, and they have a short lifespan, so there's not a ton left in like the neighborhoods and whatnot, but they have filled in all these little prairies and things very heavily. Not good. I don't understand why they don't come out and cut them down. It, that's, that's confusing. I mean, I know it costs money, but so in St. Louis, the little areas in between the highways where there's grass, they call those prairie rehabs because what a great environment for an animal to live in when you're trapped in between highways, right? And it's not just, you know, the animals. It's supposed to be prairie rehab for the plants and whatnot, but it's not it's not working out when there's these invasive trees taken over. That was just, I've whenever I drive past, I'm like, I want to talk about this, and I never do. So there's that. Oh, and I'm just going to say now, so I don't forget, I, I didn't get anything. I really want to put some thought into it, and I'm kind of hooked on that Southern Charm water lily, so I'm going to have to do a little bit of Googling. Do you guys see this? It's raining right there. Just right there. And down here. That's kind of cool. Drove through like lots of weird little spot showers on the way back. It would pour very, very, very heavily and then just like sunny. And then we're back to pouring again. The listing said 12 to 48 inches, so I can't be mad about it, but I thought this was going to be bigger. Okay, I guess I could fill you on what's going on. So, staying on theme here, just out of coincidence, I had ordered some red stem thalias off eBay. They're really hard to find, uh, at least where I live, I can never find them. 
So I grabbed some when I saw them, I saw the listing, and I was just assuming this time of year they'd be bigger. It's fine, because they said 12 to 48 inches, but I mean, this is, they're very little. But they threw in a little alakaja of some sort, so that's nice. Like, I mean, I have like 500, but that's okay. Who knows what variety is? Fun, exciting, full of surprises. I'm gonna find out eventually what that is. Okay, so I need to go ahead and plant that up. This pot's not, <laughs> my voice just cracked. This pot really isn't big enough for Thalia, but I am doing a plant order right now, inspired by trying to find that Southern Charm water lily. So uh, I'm gonna hold off on budding in something really big because I might be getting some other stuff I wanna plant with it. Does that make sense? So I've gone ahead and unpacked these. Typically, if I order pond type plants off of eBay, like if I can tell they're coming from someone's like private home, I like to give the roots and the plant a spray down with some hydrogen peroxide. But I'm out, so I'm not going to. The reason though to do that, and it's really smart to do that, is because it kills eggs, like insect eggs, snail eggs. It, that's, it's really a good idea to do it, but I don't, I don't have any. And it's uh, like 96, I think, right now. Fairly toasty, oddly, feels better today than when it was 84 yesterday when we were at the botanicals. Oh, it's the next day, by the way. I didn't, I need to like vlog a little bit at nighttime so that there's a little bit more clarity with those sorts of things. Anyways, did go ahead and give them a heavy rinse, but that's still just not as good as using the peroxide. So I'm gonna go ahead, plant these in here. I want to make sure that they are planted probably, well, it's kind of hard to tell. The person who sent these did a great job cleaning these up which is fantastic, but when you remove the outer leaves, you, it makes it hard to see where the planting line was on them. Like, uh, there's usually like a white line, sort of, it's more light down low. So I'm just gonna kind of go with it and uh, just have to keep our fingers crossed, I guess. Yeah, okay, I think that's good. Yeah, I know it seems a little bit odd to plant them close together and sort of in this teepee formation, but with things like thalias, cannas, uh, cattails even, basically aggressive growers, they're going to straighten themselves out. Once they put out their roots and they recover from being transplanted, they'll straighten themselves out. And since I don't have any stakes laying around, I'm going to let them kind of support each other. And yes, more of the rainbow gravel. I know, people are cringing. But it's like I said before, I don't see a reason to go out and buy in pea pebbles when I have this stuff laying around. May as well use it instead of just having it sit around for no reason. And I mean, it's cute, I guess. That's not really the point. Don't get me wrong, I love it. I think it's fantastic and colorful and beautiful, but a very odd aesthetic. But I mean, that's kind of me, right? So it's fine. Okay, so that's done. I threw a Black Ripple a la Kaja in there too. Ideally, that pot would be shorter. So would that one. I felt like that was submerged before, so I think that it was just hot and need to get some more water in this thing. So I think that's, but I mean, it's only gonna come up to like right there, possibly. The thalias, they do like to have a little bit of um, submergence, that's not a word. The, their roots need to stay wet, they're marginal. I drilled holes all through the sides, like tons of them, because I didn't have a planting basket laying around. Well, I did, it's just, I didn't feel like using it because I don't have any newspaper or anything to line it with right now. So this is, so it's just to get by until those other plants come in that I've ordered. I got the alakaja in there. There's holes in the side so that can stay nice and wet. It is a marginal, so the water could be a little bit deeper. I don't know. I think I just need to add some water because it's been really hot, so things have evaporated quite a bit. So, oh, you're not supposed to see that yet. Don't look. Yeah, so that was just a quick toss together because it came in the mail. I didn't know it was going to come so soon, so that's done. A couple vandas are blooming, which is fun. I pulled them over because they really... They've been getting watered, but I was worried about the snails. So I came over, I pulled them to give them a nice big check and another one, and they're they're okay. The slug and bug killer from Bonite finally came. Really great stuff. Haven't been able to get a hold of it this year. I don't know why. So I like this stuff because it, they have one that's just for snails and slugs. This one's good for ants and earwigs and stuff like that. You just kind of sprinkle it around. It's a little pellet. I'm not ready to put it down yet, so I can't really show you, but here's the label. See, it's safe and everything. There's the back label. Good stuff. Nurseries around here, they haven't had it. And here's where I'm cutting myself off. So this isn't really gonna be a two-parter because the 
the next vlog that's going to come out has nothing to do with this one at all, but that just things got really long. I sat down to edit and I was like, no, no, not happening. I know y'all like the long vlogs, but it just takes so long to uh, export and upload the really long videos. And I mean, this is long. This is plenty long. Don't be greedy. Would have been like a two hour video. I just, I'm sorry. I can't. But I'm not going to wait until the next week to release the rest of the vlog, like a couple days. So this is coming out on a Saturday. I'll try and have the other half of this vlog out on Monday, probably. So I'm sorry about that. These cicadas, like in yesterday's video, the Fern Friday, the video prior to this one, oh my goodness, I'm so sorry about the noise. I don't really know what to do there though because I either have to film really early in the morning, I'm talking like around 6 a.m. or like closer to sunset because the the heat is so high that the camera overheats very quickly, especially when I'm filming in 4K. So I was just like, well, it's summer, hopefully people understand. And it was actually, it didn't show on camera because I was using a lens that's really good at low light, but it was very dark, or getting very dark when I was filming that video. But they were still doing their thing, making noise. That's what they do. Like I said, I enjoy the noise from them, but not so much when it's coming through on a microphone in these videos. That's not, not my favorite thing. Been standing over here hoping maybe some of the fish will come up, but they don't seem to... They don't seem to want to show themselves. Also, I don't think I'm going to get it to show on camera. There's a lot of reflection here. But there's some type of insect larvae on this little piece of come on camera. Yeah, you see them in there? Those like clear things? I don't know what it is, but I'm pulling it out because it's not supposed to be there. Say, I'm confident those were not fish eggs. Most fish eggs don't like flop around and swim, you know? Oh, I hope everybody's doing well. Having a great life. Everything's going wonderfully and beautifully for you. Oh, and here's a really quick preview of the stuff I had to cut out and move into the next vlog. I'm getting this whole, this used to be like my serenity garden set up. I have a bunch of different plants, mostly Clarence plants, so like calm down about how they look. This is the one the palm tree fell on. And apparently it's going to rain. Okay. Oh. oh, do you see it? Look at the rainbow. It's like the earth has on an Instagram filter. I had to redo things over here. It was just this ring of mud that went like from right here all the way through. The entire ground, everything had shifted. Like, oh my gosh, everything I've planted over here, everything has shifted forward. What are you doing out here? You're not supposed to be out here. You're naked. You don't have your collar on. I never see poblanos for sale. Oh no. Weird fun stuff, right? And things got kind of out of control. Bad storms and stuff like that made me have to change my plans and redo things a little bit. And that's okay, that's part of the fun of gardening. I'm actually still kind of cleaning up out here from that storm. Like I was saying, hope everybody's doing well. Don't forget to leave the video a thumbs up, helps the channel a lot and the videos a lot and I really do appreciate it. And subscribe as well and hit that notification bell. That way you know when new videos come out, upload multiple times a week. I just got really, really distracted by this shiny thing on the leaf here on this alakaja. And I was cautiously going up to it and poking it and I was like, what is that? And I realized, oh, that's a part of a fly, like it's thorax. I'm guessing that that probably happened from that. The fly probably went pew, and yeah, that's, sorry fly. But I have all my social media linked down below. Give me a follow. I'm on Instagram way more than anything else. That's a good place to get a hold of me. I try and keep things updated on there as much as possible and I just like to reach out. Say hi to everybody. And speaking of saying hi, comment down below. Say what's up. Say hello. Love talking to everybody, seeing what's going on with everybody. How's your garden doing? Mine's I <laughs> Been, you know, up and down with the temps and whatnot. But uh, doing fairly well, considering. And so it, the reflection makes it look like this is dying, but look, it's not. Not one bit. It's like those little sequin things when you flip them over. That's kind of neat. All right, that's enough. Hope everybody's doing well. I've said it multiple times because I mean it. As always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. <laughs>